Welcome to Avon Glen Gospel Mission Church. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. I'm Pastor Wayne, and we're glad you've joined us. But have you ever done a quick survey of different religions? Well, if you do, you soon discover that we sit in the most unique situation. While most religions require a certain standard of excellence or demand certain actions or command absolute adherence to some form of rules, regulations, traditions, while in our relationship to Jesus, he simply asks us to trust him, to rest in him. In other religious organizations, non-compliance to the rules and the requirements brings swift, harsh penalties, while our adherence to excellence and standards are a matter of, of choice built upon a growing dependency on the goodness of God. Other religions use fear, they use worry to make their followers toe the line. And the followers are never quite sure they have really made the grade, never certain that they will receive the reward they are seeking. While in our relationship with Jesus, it's built upon mercy, grace. We are secure in Jesus Christ. We are secure in God's love. Of all the peoples of this world, we are in a most unique position. And thankfulness is not something we need to search long and hard to receive because we live in it every day. To illustrate this, listen to some words that Jesus spoke that other religions and other people will never hear. Words that people around the world are hungry for. These words that Jesus spoke that others would just love to hear and receive are found in Matthew chapter 5. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. And his disciples came to him and he began to teach them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Of all the peoples of this world, we as believers in Jesus, who receive all of these benefits from his hand, we sit in the most unique, wonderful place. May we give thanks Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day, this Thanksgiving weekend. We give thanks that we are blessed because we have received from you. So many people search for it, and it's at your hands that you freely give. We give you thanks this day for your praise and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. We are a blessed people. Now, through the last few weeks, as we considered the invisible kingdoms that are active all around us, it would be easy to be overwhelmed by the unknown. It would be easy to feel fear or anxiety when we think about the enemy that is coming against us. But in Christ, we already have the victory. We have much to be thankful for. Let's read about it in Revelation 21, verses 6 and 7. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. 
To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Because we are found in Jesus, we are overcomers. And our ability to be overcomers just simply rests in the depth of our faith in Jesus. And as we go deeper in our relationship with Jesus, our ability to overcome is strengthened. The greater our faith in what Jesus has done, the greater our ability to be overcomers. Which leads us then to the question, what has Jesus done? Of all the beautiful descriptions in scripture of what Jesus has done, I just enjoy this one from Colossians chapter 2, starting at verse 13. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So what has Jesus done? Verse 13 Jesus has forgiven us of all of our sin. One of Satan's greatest deceptions, one of his greatest lies, is to continually lay guilt upon us. But now because of what Jesus has done in forgiving us, that is a lie. To be an overcomer, stand in the truth spoken by God. Stand in the truth of what Jesus has done. You are forgiven. In verse 14, Jesus has canceled the law and the regulations from which our enemy desires to condemn us, to bring judgment upon us, to bring penalty. Jesus at Calvary fulfilled the requirements of the law of Moses, removing those requirements from us. Jesus didn't remove or destroy the law, He fulfilled it. The law is no longer required because Jesus has taken care of it, which means it's as if we have been put on trial in the heavenly courtroom for all of the trespasses of our life and the verdict has come back not guilty because Jesus has taken our place and fulfilled the requirements of the law on our behalf we will never stand before God to be judged by the law. Jesus will simply stand up in that moment and say, oh, don't worry about that. I've already handled it. Verse 15, Jesus has also removed our enemies, our enemies authority, our enemies power over us. A few weeks back, as we attempted to visualize Satan's invisible kingdom, we noted from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, the organizational structure or the ranking of various unembodied spirits. And in Ephesians, we are told that there are spirits that are holding this rank of rulers and those with the rank of authorities, also powers, and there are spiritual forces of evil. And Colossians here in verse 15 is referring back to those very same positions of authority and saying, Jesus has taken away their power, taken away their authority in those various positions for those who trust in him. And also there in verse 15, Jesus has been declared the triumph. When Paul was writing this letter to the Colossians, this was a very well-known experience or exercise. When a Roman commander won a war, 
that commander would be given the title of triumph by the Roman Senate, would receive this uh, a huge parade in which that commander would lead that parade by riding on a white horse. And behind them would be the defeated generals and the armies and all the display of the spoils of war. This was not a declaration that the victory has has been won. It it wasn't a declaration of, wow, you won this great victory. This was a declaration that the victory has already been won. Paul here in verse 15 is telling us that the victory over Satan, that Jesus has accomplished, has already happened. It is past tense. And this victory is a complete victory. This victory is a permanent victory. Uh, An overcomer, we are secure in this victory. This victory is irreversible. So what has Jesus done? He said on the cross, it is finished. Beautiful words. While the rest of the world worries about their future, fears eternity, fears eternity to the point of denying the very existence of God. They don't want to think about it. (laughs) While we simply rest in Jesus, while we rest in Jesus and trust in him, millions of people around the world through religious devotion are attempting to give themselves the opportunity for some kind of a future that is full of hope but will never receive it. We who trust in Jesus are absolutely secure in that future. In the world of baseball, as in other sports, not not everyone enjoys the different styles of coaching that comes with different managers. But Willie Mays, that great power hitter from the New York Giants appreciated the manager, Leo DeRocher. At the age of 19, Willie Mays stepped into Class B baseball in Minneapolis when he went up to the Triple A's. And after 35 games in the Triple A's, Mays was hitting an incredible .477 average. And, of course, with that kind of an average, he was sent up to the majors under DeRocher's management. And despite his incredible ability and these amazing stats, Willie Mays, he didn't want to go. He was terrified of the pitching in the major leagues. He didn't think he could hit in that environment. And it turned out to be a self-prophecy. In his first 25 attempts at bat in the major leagues, he only connected with the baseball once. And after that last game, Coach DeRocher noticed Mays sitting in front of his locker, just looking totally dejected, and went over and sat beside him. And Willie Mays blurted out in his despair, I I can't hit up here! And DeRocher pointed at his uniform and said, Willie, do you see what it says on my journey, on my jersey? It says, I am one of the New York Giants. As long as I am the manager here, you belong to us. I trust you. That was the turning point. Willie Mays never looked back. Mays said years later, at that low point in my career, I needed someone to give me confidence. And Leo DeRocher did that for me. And that is exactly what scripture is pointing out to us. This is exactly the message Jesus is speaking over you. No matter what is going on around you, no matter what the world is saying, no matter what Satan may be whispering in your ear, no matter how deflated a person's self-confidence might be, Jesus has all of us. He has you. And he says to you, I am declaring over you triumph. And in that triumph, 
we will walk together in victory. But please recall what we read a little bit earlier in Revelation 21, verse 7. The Lord through that verse says, only the overcomers inherit from him. It's a sober realization that scripture teaches that only the overcomers receive the victory. While those who do not overcome, those who fail to trust in Christ, do not inherit. Through simple faith in Jesus and in what he has already accomplished, what he has already finished, you are the overcomer. In faith, rest in Jesus. We have a lot to be thankful for. God broke into each one of our lives. God God sought each one of us out individually and said, follow me. In believing in him, you are more than a conqueror. In thanksgiving and praise, walk with him. In faith believing, written over you is the magnificent word, triumph. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in this beautiful weekend of Thanksgiving, we give you thanks. We stand in victory because of you. May we give you all the thanks and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.